What's good, YouTubers and YouTube bets? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Got a very interesting fight featuring two boxing novices, two guys in the infancy of their boxing career, but two of the guys that are very popular in the sport of boxing. One guy made his name to fame off his brother, who is the current WBC heavyweight champion. The other guy made his claim to fame off of Disney Channel. So both guys bring attributes, different type of uh, audience to this mega, mega matchup going down in Abu Dhabi, <laughs> the Middle East. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. Now we got Jake Paul, AKA the problem child. He has a record of six wins, no losses, four KOs. His last win was his best win, beating the legend of the MMA, the legend of the UFC, the Roy Jones, of martial arts and combat sports, Anderson Silva, who was coming off a, a upset win in a lot of people's eyes when he defeated the very immature, the very limited, the very wasted of his career, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who was about shame to the family name, as his dad is one of the legends of boxing, probably top 50 all time great in the sport of boxing, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. We got Jake Paul over here looking to get the win over a boxer. His naysayers, his critics have said he's not been in the ring with a boxer. He's been beating up on some washed up, wore down MMA fighters. But when you look at his resume, his resume is much superior than to the resume of Tommy Fury, who's fought. One guy had a record of zero wins and 26 losses. And another guy had a record of zero wins and nine losses. So he's fighting guys that were just coming for a check had no ambitions, had no self-esteem about themselves as far as trying to get in a square circle and get a win. And that's a goddamn shame in my opinion. This fight's gonna be about pace. This fight's gonna be about who can implement their style of fighting. It seems to me that uh, Tommy Fury is the much busier fighter. It seems to me that uh, Jake Paul is the harder puncher. It seems to me that Jake Paul's been in there obviously with the better competition. And it also seems to me that Tommy Fury has stamina issues. And that could play big dividends for Jake Paul. I think the first three or four rounds wouldn't be a big surprise if Tommy Fury is uh, ahead. Maybe three rounds to one. Maybe two, two. Could be even. But I think he's going to be doing good the first four rounds. But it's obviously it's off his past fights that he has a half a tank of gas. His gas tank is not full. He can't go to distance. This is the first time he's going eight rounds. He's a four round fighter. And I think when you look at him, he's a guy that's very muscular up top. But when you look at his uh, two legs, there's not a lot of definition there. Jake Paul called him the mission of man at the pre-fight press conference. And that's, uh, that's accurate if you ask me, man. This guy has not done any kind of leg work. I don't know if he's doing any kind of running, but to me, he's doing. He's going down the same same bad roadmap, bad game plan that Anthony Joshua has. Anthony Joshua was a guy that was top heavy, and he gassed out, had all that muscle. You're gonna gas out, man. You throwing all those punches with mean intentions behind him. You're gonna gas out, and a lot of uh, air circulation when you got all that muscle mass. You ain't getting the proper air circulation as a guy that's. You know, he might have a nice little definition, but he's not all top heavy, looking like he's ready to uh, be a weightlift champ. And that's what Tommy Fury seems to be, uh, training method seems to be. So we will see what happens. And we will see what transpires. But I like Jake Paul by six round knockouts. I think after the fourth round, Tommy Fury starts to fade. I think the gas tank is on low. He's basically riding on fumes. I think his heart and the desire not wanting to uh, tarnish the family name will keep him not being knocked out in round five. But round six, he will wave that white flag. He will have nothing left to give in this fight. And Jake Paul will knock him out by highlight reel knockout. Sixth round knockout for Jake Paul to get the win over what all the naysayers said he hasn't done up to this point. A win over boxing. So we will see what happens. And we will see what transpires now. 
one thing that Tommy Fury has to do is he's got to make Jake Paul uncomfortable. When I looked at his fights, he's a good guy as far as coming forward, throwing punches, backing his opponents up, but it's just hard to gauge because he ain't fought nobody. He's able to fight his style with no resistance, but I haven't seen him fight off the back foot. He ain't had to fight off the back foot, but I'm sure Jake Paul and his team will try to force him to fight off his back foot and see how he's performed because he hasn't had, up to this point, a chance to fight off his back foot. So we will see what happens, and we will see what transpires. Both guys are very offensive-minded. I just think that uh, Tommy Fury probably is a little bit more busier fighter, but if Jake Paul hits him with something early, get his respect, and kind of slows down his punch output and make him foul, fight the style that Jake Paul wants to uh, fight. Jake Paul wants to kind of control distance at times. Use the jab, control distance, and try to counter his opponent coming forward. That's what he'll be look, trying to do with uh, Tommy Fury. He'll be looking to set the jab, not only double up on the jab to the head, but uh, jab to the body, and basically try to catch an over-aggressive Tommy Fury coming in. Tommy Fury objective is to back up Jake Paul, get him up against the ropes, roughhouse him, go to the body, and slowly but surely break him down in the hopes to either win in a unanimous decision or a late stopping. But the uh, thing about Tommy Fury is he has not shown to have the one-punch knockout power. He says he's going to knock out Jake Paul inside four rounds, but I don't see nothing on his resume to make me believe he's going to be able to do that. I can see him winning a decision, eight-round decision, you know, just being the more busy, the more active uh, fighter in the fight and not getting caught with one of Jake Paul's bombs. I can see him winning in that way, but I don't see no way he actually knocks out Jake Paul. I think if it's a knockout, it's guaranteed to be produced by the problem child, Jake Paul. So we will see what happens, and we will see what transpires, but Jake Paul must back up Tommy Fury. Make force Tommy Fury to do something he's never done in his previous eight fights. That is fight off the back foot. That is fight effectively going backwards. If he's able to do that, and then I think the fight is pretty much a done deal. There's an old saying in sports, it's getting late early. If you see uh, Jake Paul backing up Tommy Fury in the first few rounds, it's getting late early. The end is near. The demise is destined for Tommy Fury. He must do what he's done his first eight fights. That is come forward and bring the relentless pressure and the high punch output. If he's able to do that successfully and don't get caught with no bombs, I can see him win a decision. But he's going to be uh, basically uh, playing Russian roulette, in my opinion, man. Because uh, even though he might be doing well in the first four rounds, this is going to be a matter of when Jake Paul catches him. Because it ain't like Tommy Fury is some defensive wizard. Now, he's got good uh, head movement. He does a good job of when he does come forward showing head movement. And he does a good job of fainting. As you know, Tyson Fury... Uh, and his dad, I know they've been teaching him that in the gym, the faint. And if, if uh, he's able to get Jake Paul to react off the feints, then he's going to be in control of the fight. Because if your opponent is reacting off your feints, you can kind of set up other shots. You can, you know, get him to react off the feints, get him to react off the feints. And then if he's reacting like he's going to come up top, you can go to the body. If you're reacting that you're going to go to the body, you can come up top and hit him with a, uh, a hook, a right hook or a left hook. Some shots that you can get a lot of leverage on that can do a lot of damage. So that's one thing you got to watch out for in this fight is the faint spot, Tommy Fury, and how Jake Paul reacts to those faints. You know, once he starts seeing that he, he might faint two or three times just to faint to get him out of get him out of position, then on the fourth faint, he might be looking to uh, get the reaction that he's looking for and then come over the top with a, a hard shot. So we will see what happens, and we will see what transpires. Follow me on Facebook, Gerard. Dot Briscoe dot 3551. Like, share, and subscribe to JB Sports. The man, the myth, the legend. And let me know in the comment section who you like in this fight. And I'll holler.